So guys, Team Sheets out. I just parked up here at the Emirates. And it's a very strange one. Okay, so we got Ozil. Yay! But we've benched Pepe. Okay, so so here's the deal. So it looks like we're going with a 4-4-2. And it looks like we're going with a Bamian and Lacazette up front. Now, this is a kind of diamond that they used against Watford. And it didn't really work for one reason. It didn't really work because it left us exposed on the flanks. And Wolves like to really put the ball out on the side and attack with crosses, as many crosses as they can. Um, because that's just the way how their team set up. So I can see us getting plummeted on the wings in this game from the side. And it's just very strange because why would Emery go back to that formation that we had against Watford when since then he's been trying to play with the Sabala sitting behind the three strikers? And that was Sacco, Pepe, Abamian, And obviously when Lacazette came back, it was... Pepe, Lacazette and Aubameyang. But Sabalos was sitting behind them. So now you've got Ozil back, a person who can thrive in that formation, and then you change the formation. It's a weird one. Um, but you know what? I, I stand to be corrected if, if it works. I stand to be corrected, as always. I'm just giving my opinion. And it doesn't seem like this formation is going to get the best out of us. I'm really not sure. And, and and in regards to Pepe, Pepe's played a lot of football. Yes, he probably needed a rest. Yes. But he was just coming into form. I mean, right now, Aubameyang's not really been scoring. Lacazette has been poor since he's come back from his injury. Saka has needed a rest. And he has been getting uh, a few sub appearances. So no doubt you can't burn out the poor 18-year-old boy after he's just made made the first team. So, really, Pepe is the informed player, and and you bench him. If you needed to rest Pepe, give him an hour, and then take him off after sixty or sixty-five minutes, and then put Lacazette. Because and I said it in match day commentary against Palace, it doesn't look like Lacazette is a hundred percent. It really doesn't. He just seems off the pace. He's feigning fouls all the time dropping on the floor rolling around it just doesn't look like the player that we know uh the player who can hold the ball up well who is sharp strong backs up into defenders that's not the Lacazette that we've seen since he's come back from his injury and to me it just looks off the pace a bit so if that's the case why didn't you start Pepe remember Pepe can work in a two up front as well as a three um we knew that when we bought him he can play as a false nine but I uh, just uh, I'm a bit wary about this team sheet but anyway I stand to be corrected as long as Zaka is not playing and as long as Ozil's in there then I think it's it's, it's okay so Torreira's actually starting in this game today and by all intended purposes this is probably our best 11 I've been talking about this all season long you know who's our best 11 nobody really knows but this to me looks like our best 11 for now and this is without Bellerin, Holding. Let's wait to get these guys back into contention and then see some improvement moving forward. But as of this point in terms of right now, I think that this is our best 11. It would be good to see what Torreira can do sitting at the back there to try and hold the fort and protect that back four. But I don't know. I mean, we're, he's used them in a diamond before playing way too up front. And I don't want to see that today. I don't want to see it. I want to see him at the back, using his range and vision, protecting the back four and doing what he does best and just counteracting any attacks that keep going forward. Francis Coughlin was amazing at that. Torreira last season was great. And it's the first time we've seen that kind of protection. And then all of a sudden it's just vanished because he's either played him too far up the pitch when he played uh, Torreira or just not play Torreira at all I always think that Torreira uh, thing uh, has needed to be in there to create that stability at holding midfielders but um, hey listen I don't get paid to make the decisions Emery does and let's see how this works out so that's a team sheet guys so it looks pretty good at the moment the weather here is awful it's terrible man it's uh, wet it's windy it's rainy and uh, let's just hope that three points could get us some smiles on our face and warm us up a little bit. I have gone for a 1-1 draw, um, but that was before I've seen a team sheet. I think I'm going to stick with that at the moment just for consistency. Um, because, as I said, we really don't trust where this team 
is going to go. Emery has proven he can't get the best out of these players. And until that happens, and I'm not just talking about one game, I'm talking about a spread of fixtures. Until that happens, then we can't really make a decision. Leicester away is going to be a big, 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 big game for us. Because I don't think if you're a realist like me, no one's going to really expect you to come out of that game with three points. So um, so here we go. I'm going to go to Auntie's and pick up my oxtail and rice and peas and jerk chicken. And uh, I'll speak to you guys at half time and we'll see how this goes, man. Peace out. Hi guys, just wanted to point out that um, Camden Town Bury have got a contract with Arsenal now. And what they're doing is they're trialling having a bar outside the stadium in the winter. I hope it's warm in there. I'm about to go and check it out. Uh, where you can go in and just have a, a, a couple of sweets, a drink, a, a nice beer. As you can see here, I'll just show you what it looks like. It comes around here. It's just, it looks like it can have about 100 people sitting. It's just something that they've added on there because of a new contract. And so if it works, then I guess it works. If you guys come around here, get to the stadium, check it out. And uh, yeah, it's just another added feature of some of the changes that Arsenal have been working through with the Emirates. Okay, so on my way to my seat now, catch up with you guys later. Hey, what's up guys? It's half time and it's Wolves nil, Arsenal 1. It's a pretty good result considering there has been some changes and adjustments. I think what's important here to understand is Wolves, as I said in the pre-game, was using the width because of the way how our formation was set up and basically just attacking us on the sides and there's really not much we could have done. Wolves had five shots on target in the first 10 minutes and uh, it seems like that caused Emery to be slightly animated on the sideline. He's made some adjustments and after that Arsenal started to settle into the game. Believe that they had no shots on target before the goal, which uh, worked out pretty well. We had up to 60% possession after the first 10 minutes and started to control the game. And we were nullifying the flanks that Wolves were using to attack us and forcing them to come into the middle where we could pretty much deal with them. So towards the end of the half, Wolves be became slightly more of a threat. But outside of that, the partnership that is working well with Sabalas and Ozil setting up the strikers seems to be working at the moment now. Uh, Sabalos is working twice as hard as Ozil to get the same result. Ozil looks really silky smoothie. Ozil's cutting back as well. He's backtracking, fighting for the ball as well, doing what you need to see from him in a position like this where he's got to earn a spot on the team now. So, uh, yeah, listen, the goal was fantastic. Ball played in from David Luiz. Lacazette backs into the defender, uses his strength, slips the ball into Aubameyang and it's a first time hit finish for his 50th goal and uh, listen, 79, 80 appearances for him and uh, he just took it well and that's what captains are supposed to be doing Aubameyang's also fighting, going into duels, winning challenges and it's just what you want to see from your leader Outside of the first 10 minutes, Arsenal looked like they've got a control on the game a little bit of a situation where we were being sloppy in possession Gwendozi had lost the ball a couple of times and so had Torreira. I'm still not sure about Torreira in this diamond. I've never liked him in the diamond. He's, he's, he's too wide, too up front and doesn't really get back to protect the back four, which is what you'd like to see from him. But anyway, let's see what happens in the second half. Speak to you guys later. Peace. Okay guys, so it's a one-all draw and it's exactly what I predicted. I'm not surprised and uh, it's exactly what I expected. So many things in this game just tells you exactly how the team are supposed to perform. This is what I felt was Arsenal's best chance today, which was a draw. It, it, they're just not good enough. And let's start from the beginning. He sets the team up in a 4-4-2 diamond formation. And what it does is... If you had done your homework, you've actually set the team up to give Wolves an advantage because you're so narrow in the diamond that Wolves' strength is playing on the flanks. And what you've done is you've essentially given Wolves um, a chance to dominate you for most of the game. And while we kind of figured it out, Wolves had, as I said, five shots in the first 10 minutes. And Arsenal figured it out by trying to nullify and spread out that diamond, but it still alienated Torreira. Torreira was awful today, couldn't get in the game, never has been able to play in that formation. And this is very worrying. I've talked about us ruining Torreira's career with Emery, 
and that's exactly what he's doing. Torreira needs to be sitting in front of the back four so he can protect him. He's no good to you if you're playing him further up the field. And for some reason, Emery seems to be doing that. Kieran Tierney did well today, but he was under pressure. And it wasn't until they got Saka on the field for Torreira that uh, Kieran Tierney actually got the help that he needed. It, it just, for me, it just doesn't seem like Emery's doing his homework. And it just doesn't seem like tactically, the way this team is set up, we're not really on top of things. But what was the problem was again, Bert Leno's distribution was awful today. And not just that, but the ridiculous playing out from the back, which it just is not working. It's just not working. And at times we took too long to make the decision to play the ball long. And I tell you what, Wolves didn't really commit too many men forward in order to take advantage of that. But overall, it was to be expected. Let's talk about the goal from Wolves. It did come, as I said, from the right-hand side, which is where Wolves were having luck. They still could not cross, stop the cross from coming in, which you have to do. And we've talked about that quite a lot, haven't we? About Arsenal's inability to stop crosses from coming in. It hurts you time and time again, and it hurt again today. And what we saw was nothing short of ridiculous. And the two red shirts got out-jumped for the goal and get it into the back of the net and it's poor, sloppy, badly defended, not contested. Meza Ozil was fantastic today. I thought his interlink play was great. With five minutes left, he penetrates down the left, plays a one-two, darts and drifts onto the byline and plays a wonderful ball into the box and nobody gets on the end of it. That's not Ozil's fault. He's created chances over and over again. And if his strikers are not getting onto the end of them, you can't put that down to him. But at the end of the day, guys, another opportunity missed. It's a one-all draw. More points dropped today. And this is about as much as Arsenal can do. This is the limit of the team. They can't really do much more than this. And that's where I'm going to leave it. There's a lot of singing here from the fans you can see coming down on the side. Uh, and I'm going to go and meet up with some of the guys now. So I'll speak to you guys later, right back at you. Speak to you later. Peace.